All right, guys, episode two of opening up Pandora's box. You know, I don't know how I'm going to do all these episodes. And the funny thing is, is that there's one episode I don't want to do. I'm going to have to do it. I'm not going to do it yet. I don't want to do it to the end because I know how it's going to go down. And that's the whole spawning, right? This, the fish spawning, fish on beds. I hate getting into that subject. I'll tell you why I hate getting into that, into that subject is that like people already have their mind made up on that. They do it based on what they hear from other people. They've done zero research on their own. They haven't spent that much time looking in the water. They haven't spent that much time on these lakes. They don't know much about sight fishing, fishing off beds, how the fish reproduce, how many eggs they've all these things. They don't know anything about that. And they just, they just comment just and just spew off things that they hear. Oh, we should never catch fish off beds. I, I don't want to even go down that, that video yet because I want to get through all this other stuff because I just know what's going to happen on that video. But I'm still going to make it because y'all know me. I'm not going to back down from people like that. But they just don't know. They can say they know, but they just haven't spent enough time out there to really, they just don't, they just don't get it. And this comes from all of us. Like there's a giant group of us that have been doing this a long time. We all think the same way. I'm just saying. And when I say all of us, like tons of professional fishermen that have spent more times on the water doing this over multiple lakes to understand that what's really going on on that subject. But, but this kind of ties in a little bit. This does. A lot of comments were made about droughts and floods. And I agree. Droughts and floods, in my opinion, have more to do with bass populations than almost anything. Like, like you, we could talk about spawning, right? In the fish off of beds and that, and it accounts for maybe 1% of change. When a flood could happen or a drought could happen and maybe have 70% of change to your lake. Now, I didn't say whether it was good or bad. I just said it could have change. Now, what I have realized is I can go through most of my lakes that I know about and tell you what's going to be good and bad right if a flood is good or if a drought is good right now there's we have i wouldn't say a drought in texas but i'm gonna I'm pick a couple lakes raven for example raven is six foot low it's not gonna hurt raven at all this is the best thing ever for raven okay best thing ever for raven and here's why when raven gets six foot low a couple things happen one all the water so all the land that is that was usually in the water is becoming more fertile things are growing on that land for whatever reason and someone can tell me this but i kind of know but i'm not going to go into the scientific reasons that land you know it needs sunlight right to germinate the the seeds in that in the ground usually when this happens and the and the land get, gets exposed to the air to the sun and the sun underwater things grow on it and usually it becomes more fertile when the lake comes back up. So hydrilla seems to grow way better when this happens, okay? Hydrilla doesn't grow very well in high water, it grows well in low water. So now the land that was underwater, it's getting fertilized. And it, when the water comes back up, it's gonna be great. So that's one positive. The second positive, which is crazy, is that as the lake drops, our lake actually becomes a little bit flatter and grass grows better around the lake. So we have now more grass in the lake than I've seen in years, almost all over the lake. And it's growing further out, further out in the lake, which is a good thing. Because our lake used to be phenomenal the further out grass grew in a lake, okay? When it's only growing in the creeks, it's not that good. When it starts growing on the flats, now on the main lake, makes our lake a lot better and we have more grass, more habitat. More habitat's a good thing. So you would think, oh, the lake's drop and there's not enough habitat. There's almost actually more because we've had more grass now grow. So now not only do we have more grass grow when the lake comes back up, now the shoreline's gonna have more stuff. So even when the lake comes back up, we're gonna have double the amount of, of cover, right? This isn't the same thing as cover when it gets high. Yes, the water gets, when the water gets high, it puts all these trees and things in the water. What I've noticed with that, although it's not a 
horrible thing. Fish a lot of times don't go in all that stuff. They don't like it. Um, a lot of that is because of like when water gets in that stuff, it sours and it, and it, and the pH balance actually gets messed up in some of that high water. So it actually, it, it, that's why it kills trees. It kills things over time. And, and th that decaying stuff is actually usually not great for the lake at times, right? It's not, it's not the worst thing. I'm just saying it's not as good. I think the water getting low is a good thing. Now, with high water and low water, two things can happen, okay? So bear with me. This is only on Rayburn, guys. Every lake's different. With Rayburn, what, Rayburn and Toledo are right next to each other. High water on Rayburn and high water on Toledo, two way different things. Rayburn, and why Rayburn will always be good, it will always still be the best lake in Texas and in the country. I can't ever see this ha changing unless this changes. We are a flood control lake, which means our lake rises very, very slow. Our lakes drop very, very slow. This lake has been dropping. It's gone down six foot. It's taken about six months to do it. So it's gradual. When it comes up, it comes up gradual. Now it might rise a foot or two in a couple days, but it's not gonna rise 20 foot in two days like some lakes do. It's gonna be a gradual rise. Here's the most important thing. We do not just like let the water out. As the lake is at 10, it's been 10 to 11 foot high, which is at its peak. When it drops, it drops very, very slowly. It takes months for it to get dropped down to normal, months. A lot of these lakes can do it in a couple days. It takes months. Now, why is that important? A couple of reasons. Mainly is this reason. We'll all agree that most of these lakes flood in the springtime, correct? What are they doing in the springtime? Spawning. I do think spawning is the, is the most critical thing for bass population, okay? Well, they hate two things. They don't like water rising or water falling. Bass hate that. They like, they definitely like, they don't like hot weather, cold weather, the fluctuations. Bass, when they spawn, want things to stay exactly the same. So a constant is the best thing for a bass to spawn. The water on Rayburn, if it drops during the spring times, drops at such a slow rate that bass can spawn, spawn in three foot of water. And as it's dropping, they can get all everything they need done. And that it's not gonna be dry land by the time they're done. You get on a lake, let's bring in all the TVA lakes, like, like Kentucky Lake. Kentucky Lake, they will drop water four feet in one day or two days. If it's constantly going up and down, bass are having a really hard time spawning. It's hard on those lakes when this happens. Toledo Bend, which is right next door to Raven, is a constant level lake. What I mean by that is it's, a, it's not a flood control lake. It will go up and down, yes. They will pull it though, okay? So if the water gets too high, they will run some water through Toledo Bend. And I'm talking about current, if it gets up here, they will drop it down. It's not as bad as some of those other lakes, but it's definitely not as good. And they can drop it, and it's bad on a couple things. One, it will kill the grass because of the current and the muddy water rushing through there. That's a lot of water. Bass don't really like that. Remember, they like a constant level. Rayburn has water coming in and going out at a very slow rate. It's more constant, okay? With that, Grass doesn't usually die as quick. We usually have more vegetation. It's clear, okay? Water running through a lake like Toledo Bend, it gets muddy as can be if you're running water through there, especially rainwater that's coming in from rivers. It kills more grass. You have less vegetation, less habitat. Rayburn seems to keep that better because of that. When Toledo's phenomenal, it'll keep it. But if you have those fluctuations, it's bad. Now. A lot of these other lakes, you might say, okay, let's talk about Amstead. Amstead was like the number one lake in the country at one time. Same with Falcon. They're South Texas lakes. When we, they get floods and droughts, it's, it's, it's like they're like multiplied by 10, right? 
their, their floods are 10 times worse than ours. Their droughts are 10 times worse than ours. Am says like 60 foot low, right? That has something that's bad. If, if Amstead could ever get high again, all that stuff that's growing on the shoreline will make Amstead the number one lake in the country again. But that might be another 10 years because we're going on almost another 10 years since that's happened. We need hurricanes for that to happen. We need, we need a lot of things happening in Mexico and the U.S. in the mountains for all those lakes to, to like come up. The other bad part is, is we don't own the rights to all that water. Mexico owns a lot of that rights. So they pull water. They don't care about that lake being high. They need water for farming and stuff like that. So we're doing a lot of that stuff to those lakes. Now, like I said, I've been on Grand. You, you've, uh, Florida's had it happen. You, you get all these places with floods and depending on how the lake is managed, remember it's not managed for the fishing. It's managed for everything else around it. The contracts downstream, who do they, who do they flood? Do they flood the downstream people, the upstream? Whatever it is, that's where it hurts. Now, Rayburn is good because we grow grass. This helps. Get a lot of lakes that don't grow grass during that drought it does hurt those lakes because it is putting less habitat in the water okay so it does matter on certain lakes it does when it comes back up usually it's a good thing it can be a good thing to be honest if i'm one of those guys in one of those lakes that's getting a lot and lot of droughts i don't want the drought to end in a year it might be bad and you might have to suffer through it but usually the longer that drought happens if you can if you can live through the bad when that lake fills back up the things that grow in that lake are usually better it regenerates those lakes i think regenerated lakes are better than just normal lakes so a lake that can regenerate itself right a lake a lake that fluctuates it, you don't want it to fluctuate bad just enough or slowly those lakes usually tend to do well, right? Because it's not crazy fluctuations. This lake right here, I'm on Livingston. This is my home lake, okay? This lake, problem with this lake is, is over time, they built these things. They built these, these seawalls. We call them bulkheads, seawalls, whatever. And they all they do is they protect the erosion from right there, from that north wind. And they're great and all, but they're horrible for fishing. And the reason is, is it causes this lake to silt up because this lake's already bad about silting. And so this lake becomes more silty, more flatter, and it's just, it becomes all dirt. And that creek right there, you can see it right over there, Wolf Creek, used to be one of the number one creeks on this entire lake. You can barely, it used to be phenomenal underneath that bridge. I can't tell you how many giants i've caught underneath that bridge you can't get within 100 yards of that bridge because of the silt that has come up from that now one way to make this place better is for this lake to go down about i would love it to go down about 10 foot but if it went down five foot for like two years this lake's phenomenal because what happens is this the lake drops five foot this place gets grown up with all kinds of weeds sea bean trees shoreline grass all the stuff that this lake doesn't have all the habitat it doesn't have the, those boat docks that's not creating habitat for perch and everything else in this lake we need other stuff like but like it's great for a four pounder if a four pounder already exists we need that four pounder to make babies and it's not making babies on on that boat dock and those boat docks and, and those fish living we need that creek we need fish to go back in that creek if this dropped low enough, you're like, well, they're not gonna get back in that creek if it's low enough. You're correct. This place silts in so bad though, as it gets low and we have rains, that water has to run through that creek and it pushes the silt out. It creates a new creek again. It makes the creek deep. And if you get it low enough, it forms a new creek. And guess what? When the lake comes back up, they can all go back into that creek. Now that creek has been low for so long, it has all kinds of stuff growing in that creek before it was just dirt it will happen all over the lake like this now we need something we need a couple droughts right for a couple years for that to happen and it can't happen in one year it has to happen for like two or three years it has to stay low a long time tra doesn't want to keep this thing low all these people's boat docks can't use their boat docks and their boats and 
They don't like that, right? And I understand that. I'm just telling you what would be good for the fishing part of it. Although they are doing none of this for fishing. So yes, droughts, floods, all that matters. But it just depends on the lake you're on. It, it just does. So I know, I, I, I hear y'all when some of y'all are saying, hey, droughts are hurting this lake. It is, it's helping others. And sometimes floods are hurting certain lakes and other lakes it's helping, right? There's certain floods, depending on how it floods, it's helping those lakes. It's putting water up. Like there's a lot of lakes that, that don't have a lot of it. Texoma is one of them. If the water just comes up a little bit in the springtime, right? There's enough stuff growing three or four foot up, like bushes and things that they don't have. It creates, it makes that lake phenomenal. I'm not saying 15 foot high, but four or five foot high for like a month or two in the springtime, best thing that could happen for that lake. They, everything spawns, everything's good to go. I mean, that guy out there, that guy, that guy out there making a giant wake skiing yeah he ain't worried about none of that he wants this lake like it is so we can go do that i get it like, and, and i don't even hate on those guys right i mean they have every right to that lake as we do but for fishing yes so like i said when i when i bring all this up i'm not bringing up one specific thing i think about all those things i think about you guys in on the tva lakes in kentucky lake and gunnersville and when y'all run water through there right and when you're running that much current in the springtime and those lakes are dropping seven foot up seven foot down things like that that's not good for fishing y'all know that and so yes the carp and all these different things about about kentucky lake let me tell you something if you had kentucky lake stay level and stay normal through the springtime or just be a foot high up in those bushes your lake would be good if y'all did that for four years your lake would be phenomenal I'm not saying you can do that. You don't even have, it's, it's not even y'all's decision, right? I mean, it's mother nature. So sometimes you just gotta let mother nature do its thing. And a lot of times when mother nature is doing its thing, sometimes it's hurting you, sometimes it's helping you. But it might be help, hurting you and helping your neighbor, right? It's just one of those things. So think about that, because I'm thinking about that in these comments. I'm thinking about that when I do these videos. All right. That's, that's the drought thing, how that affects the bass, whether they're there or not. Why is your lake good or bad? A lot of times it's that reason and not tournaments or, you know, someone catching a fish off of a bed. Trust me, catching one fish off a of bed or even a thousand fish off a of bed is way worse than disrupting the four million fish that are in there trying to spawn. That's way worse, guaranteed. All right, next one's coming up soon. Stay tuned for that one. See you guys.